Uh, so welcome to a special episode of Compound Your Knowledge. On today's video, what I'd like to do is walk through and talk about the calculation for the, uh, a value called active share. Um, you may have seen this highlighted or discussed uh, by some in the media uh, or you know um, analysts out there. And so I wanted to just highlight and walk through how exactly one calculates active share, right? So real quickly, uh, I'm gonna do this in Excel. I will post the Excel file afterwards so everyone can go and download the file and uh, look at the calculations yourself. So active share is a calculation. The whole idea behind it is to attempt to essentially say how different um, one fund is from another, right? And so I posted an image of the formula right here, right? And so let me just walk through or talk about it and then I'll give uh, a couple examples. So active share, it's uh, one half, right? So that's just one half here. And then we sum up from one to n, right? So if there's, if there's 500 stocks, this would be from one to 500. The weight of the stock, right, in fund, the, 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 the weight of stock one in the fund minus the weight of stock one in the index, right? And we take the absolute value of that, that's what these bars are here, and we sum it up and divide it by two. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna walk through two quick examples, and then I'll show you some real live examples using some ETFs out there. So what I did here was I created uh, an index fund, right? So here I say, weight in the index. And in my index, I have 20 stocks, right? We have some larger stocks in the index that have weights of 20%, some bigger stocks that have 10%, percent nine, five, four, and then the remainder are one. What we notice is the weights of all the stocks sum up to 100%, right? Now, let's say I had a uh, fund. I'm gonna, we're gonna skip stock 21 for now. Pretend we had fund two. And in fund two, all we did was we equal weighted the index, right? Very simple methodology, whereby I do 5% and I do this for 20 stocks. So of the 20 stocks that are in our index fund, I simply just equal weight the allocation, right? So if we sum these up, we get 100% shown here. Okay, so how would you go about calculating the active share calculation? I'm gonna do this in row F. So active, right? All right, so what you do using our formula above is we're gonna take the absolute value of the weight of the stock and subtract off the weight of the index, right? If we do this in percent, we see it's 15%. I copy this down. So this does this for every one. What we notice is, right, for stock seven that had a 5% weight in the index, that is exactly the same as what we have here. Okay. So that's how we do the absolute value. Now, how would we get, I'm gonna delete these, how would we get the active share, right? What we would do is we would say equals one half times the sum of these values, right? We sum up all of the absolute value of these differences. And what we see is that there, this fund has a 49% active share, right? What that means is if we look here, right, the overlap is essentially a way, one way to cover, to uh, view overlap of funds, right? Um, for SOC 1, which is 20% of the index, right, has a 20% weight, it only has a 5% in my equal weighted fund, so it has a 15% difference, right? When we sum this up, we get an active share of 49%. Okay, now I'm gonna do uh, two more examples. I'll slide a little bit over here. Okay, so we're gonna make up another one. We'll call this fund three. Do the same thing, weight in 
fund three, right? Okay, so in fund three, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a stock that is completely not even involved in the index, right? So you could imagine this could also be like a set of stocks. So let's pretend these are all zero, right? And this is 100%. So what we see is compared to our index fund over here, right, that invests in stocks one through 20, fund three simply invests in one stock that happens to be outside the index. So if I went, let me change my error here, right? Okay. So I'm going to do the same calculation equals absolute value of this minus the index. Sum this up. Okay. What we notice is my active share, right, for stock one is 20%, right? Or the sorry, the difference in weights, right? Because fund three has zero weighting, whereas the index fund is a 20% weight, okay? So what happens in this extreme example, just to highlight, right, is if we sum all these up, we get 200%. And this makes sense, right? So when I do my active share calculation, which is one half times the sum of these absolute value of the differences, I get a 100% active share. So this makes sense and it kind of highlights that if a fund has a active share near 100%, what that means is the weights in that fund, in my example here, just fund three, happen to be vastly different than that of the index fund. Okay, so uh, these are just some simple examples that I walk through. Here are some live examples where I already did the calculations, but I just wanted to talk about it. Um, and then at the end, I'll give a brief explanation of how one could use active share. Okay, so what I did was I pulled down the weights for five, e sorry, four ETFs, right? The first is SPY, this is the S&P 500 ETF. The next is IWB, this is uh, the Russell 1000, so the thousand largest stocks, so around top 500 lar largest stocks, top 1000 largest stocks, RSP, this is the equal weighted S&P 500 ETF. So as opposed to market cap weighting, we equal weight. And then the last is SYLD. Uh, this is the shareholder yield fund uh, by Cambria uh, and Mev Faber, right? And one of the, what I want to do, and we can just take a look, is we'll look at some of the differences, right? So first, if we look at the difference between the Russell 1000 and the S&P 500, we see that the weights are pretty small. These differences are small, especially for these big stocks. So for example, Microsoft, which is the largest component, at least as of, uh, I think the 13th was the day I pulled the data, right? Microsoft was the largest <clears throat> stock. And in both funds, it happens to be larger. So the difference in weightings is pretty small. Now, when we examine the equal weighted S, oops, equal weighted S&P 500 relative to the SPY, right? Remember, if you have 500 stocks and you equal weight them, they all have a weighting initially around 0.2%, right? So Microsoft, as we know, has done pretty well relative to other stocks, so it has a higher weighting right now. And we see a big difference, almost 5.2% difference uh, relative, if you were an equal weight investor, relative to simply being uh, uh, market cap weighting. And then the last is looking at MEB's uh, shareholder yield ETF. Now this ETF is only going to pick around 100 stocks, so there's going to be a lot of zeros. And if we look here, for example, on Microsoft, shareholder yield has zero weighting. It doesn't even have a position in this stock. So the difference is exactly 5.49%, right? Similarly for Amazon, right? Amazon's 3.92% for the S&P, 0% in shareholder yield, right? 
And then I similarly did shareholder yield relative to IWB, right? Um, the only reason I did that is shareholder yield can pick more than the top 500 stocks, right? And so what we do is we do this calculation for every single stock, right? Come down. As we notice, right, as I scroll down slowly, and I'll show you exactly what happens. So, you know, once we get below around the 500 stock, we notice that the first column, which happens to be the S&P 500, now has zero weighting. Whereas the Russell 1000, which includes the thousand largest firms, is gonna have some of these other stocks included in here, right? And so we're gonna have a little bit of a difference. So we get down to the bottom. And again, what do I do? I take the sum of the differences in, in the weights and divide it by two. And what we see is not surprisingly, the Russell 1000 and the S&P 500 have a very high overlap, right? Their active share is only 9%, meaning around 90 to 91% of the fund's over holdings have overlapping weights, okay? Similar to my actual hypothetical example over here, the active share of the equal weighted S&P 500 is uh, relative to the SPY is around 50%, it's 47%. Looking at shareholder yield, which is only again, selecting around 100 stocks, right? It has almost a 90% active share relative to two common indices like the S&P 500 and the Russell 1000. So this was a simple explanation for how the active share uh, number gets calculated, right? And again, what does active share tell you? It doesn't tell you whether or not it's good or bad, right? So having an active share of zero simply means that you basically have just replicated the index. Having an active share of 100 means you have almost, you have literally no overlap whatsoever with the index, okay? So it's a simple way to ascertain whether the fund or the investment that you're making uh, what degree of variability it's taking on in on its weightings relative to the index. So hope you all enjoyed this. And again, I will post the Excel file online for you to download and mess around with. Thank you. The views expressed in this recording are the personal views of the participants as of the date indicated and do not necessarily reflect the views of Alpha Architect itself. Nothing contained in this recording constitutes investment, legal, tax, or other advice and should not be viewed as a current or past recommendation or a solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any securities or to adopt any investment strategy. The information in this recording is based on current market conditions which will fluctuate and may be superseded by subsequent market events or for other reasons. Alpha Architect does not resume any duty to update forward-looking statements. The information in this recording has been developed internally and or obtained from sources believed to be reliable. However, no representation or warranty, expressed or implied, is made or given by or on behalf of Alpha Architect as to the accuracy and completeness or fairness of the information contained in this recording. Any liability as a result of this recording, including direct, indirect, special, or consequential loss or damage is expressly disclaimed. Copyright 2018, Alpha Architect LLC, all rights reserved.